java development so the technology which i use like java with a spring boot microservices a spring cloud component as a backend front end some of the exposures in angular also i have a good experience in database like uh, mongo oracle mongo as a no sql oracle sql and uh, coming for the uh, cloud i have a good knowledge about this aws cloud services so most of the cloud services i used and uh, for the devops part i used uh, like apache maven jenkins jira github glk splunk and all so these all are used while we are developing application or monitoring the application so these things or these technology and tools are used coming for the domain i have also good experience in different different domain which i worked like banking telecom e-commerce and health currently which i am working that is based on the health insurance project so that project is mostly managing the health so suppose if any type of customer if he, he want of any insurance then he will come in the portal and then they can take so once he will come in this portal then internally we'll have a multiple orders will be processed so once users has order has been created then after that we will process through the store then we will check the particular uh, order uh, id and payments and after that we'll uh, verify the customer for the uh, if a users is applicable or customer is applicable for promo code and then payment will calculate and then after that that notifications and all will happen to the customer so that customer will get notified through the sms email alert and all so this type of all informations which will be captured by the different different microservices internally so we are handling or creating a microservices here so my role and responsibility in this project handling a project based on the api development so while we are developing applications we are following agile based on the agile we have a sprint task we need to work on the particular sprint so whatever the jira task will be defined for the particular sprint we need to work uh, so daily basis developing microservices api some of the cases will have a communications will happen after the third party or maybe internal communications so we used java api or as a synchronous and some of the asynchronous communications we used our messaging queue as a kafka apart from this while we are developing applications so Oh, that will be go for the deployment of different different uh, environment so once it will go for the production environment in that time we need to stay on call so there will be some call setups where uh, while production deployment so we need to check all the things like whatever the changes we have done that is verified by not or what are the configurations logs security implemented or not like that any type of validation is there that is valid or not so once we will validate uh, verify these changes that will be go for the deployment if anything will be there that may be uh, for this deployment uh, in production then we have to do the some hotfix deployment so immediately we have to give the solutions we have to check the solutions uh, uh, and uh, give the root cause and all that but that will be happen rarely but we need to stay on call to the deployment process and all so that type of work i'm doing on daily basis okay so this this covers the day-to-day -day responsibilities in terms of uh, yes deploying, i mean development activities development and deployment uh, deployment yeah all the sanity checks which you need to do post yes. deployment, all of this. Sure. You, you yeah. have covered mm. all of that. Okay. Correct. Uh, so you you would consider yourself as uh, both front end and back end, or only uh, from back end perspective? Only back end with AWS DevOps tools. Okay. So so you mentioned that you have some exposure with Angular, right? Yeah. Uh, you have exposure with react as well or only react i have some ideas but no no okay uh, no hands on is it 
Hands on I have but uh, five to six months less than only so not here. Oh, okay. Mm, and uh, the uh, related to microservices, we are using Spring Boot. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, can you briefly define like what all are the advantages you have seen over uh, Spring Boot using Spring Boot microservices? Yeah, we have a multiple advantages are there in a Spring Boot microservices. So while uh, coming for the spring boot in a spring boot have a like uh, we have a spring initializer are there a spring starter dot io is there through that we can create a dummy project as per the requirement we need to add the dependency and then create a development project second thing is uh, like uh, we have a spring boot application annotation so internally this will be work of three annotations like enable auto configuration configurations component scale so whatever the configurations you are doing for multiple database communications or any other uh, security or any other thing that will be there in the application dot property file so automatically will be taken care of through the spring boot application annotation third is we can uh, changes we can uh, verify or do some runtime changes through the application here .yml file we can um, change the port and all we have a command line uh, runner is there through that we can run the applications or uh, create a jar war and all apart from this like uh, we have a uh, uh, health matrix so actuators and all are there swagger through that we can create our api documentations swaggers uh, through that and actuators we can monitor the applications we can check all the metrics of health log and uh, applications check health checkup so like that we have a multiple advantages are there so we can use a spring boot applications so mostly annotation based is a very advantage on latest annotations which we used in a spring boot coming for uh, like auto wiring and all is there coming for uh, microservices microservices also have many advantage and disadvantage are there so while going for the advantage like easily we can uh, divide the multiple sub module in the particular large module SOA based mod module and then each developer can develop simultaneously for the diff different different requirement and easily we can develop why because that is deprecated in different module so easily we can deploy develop the applications if any changes is required for the particular application so no need to stop whole applications particular instance or particular services you can stop and you can uh, do some uh, like a uh, circuit breaker concept like so that uh, users or any customer will understand this services is not available right now and all so this type of things are there we have a 12 factor things are there so that is very disadvantage while we are developing and all. okay mm, so you, you mentioned like you you implemented swagger in your uh, project is yeah it like yes so and uh, coming to uh, the coding practices like what all are the uh, testing uh, unit testing models or, uh, or do you do you use mockito or any other how, how what are the testing practices for the code written you follow in general yeah. Yeah, in general we followed like while we are writing any unit testers so may, mostly we use j unit mockito and all so based on that we have a multiple annotations through that we can uh, annotate uh, our unit uh, framework and then we will test so uh, while we used we have a jcoco sonar cube tools which is there so jcoco which will be used for the code coverage and sonar will have a integrated with the uh, like uh, we will need to check the health of uh, the testing of particular applications so what are the code smell what are the code coverage where uh, unused data unused line of code is there so through that we can do the uh, sonar queue apart from this like uh, we'll have a, a mockito power mock and all there so for that we can access uh, either a static non-static data member of member functions we can create an object and we can access either uh, we'll have a hard coding data or maybe we'll have a json data that we have to call and then you use the uh, existing uh, classes which will be there in the service classes controller classes and all uh, based on that we can write the unit test cases uh, what are the data structures you have done uh, data structures in terms of data structures part mostly we used collections so that collections framework is there in that we have a list set and queue map this I used so list we used array list link list uh, mostly I used set 
has set linked has set tree sets are used map we have same has map tree map linked has map this all I used frequently for the project purpose mm. and uh, what all are the sorting methods a static method a static yeah. method while oh, okay. can, can you all the sorry sorry i was i was talking about sorting algorithm sorting mm -hmm. algorithm mm -hmm. quick sort uh, much sort okay. the sorting algorithm uh, what are the sort and uh, uh, can you list down the complexity uh, i mean the time complexity associated with some of the sorting algorithms yeah uh, so uh these quick sort merge sort and all i haven't used right now in this practice but i have worked before not in uh, just i have idea not it right now yeah you can just uh, define like what whatever countries you have you can just mention mm, yeah this quick sort merge sort and uh, selection sorts are there so these all are used for the sorting technique so for that we have um, two complexity will be there as a time complexity a space complexity which will be defined so while we we need to calculate the complexity then uh, we have uh, algo which for form so we have a q annotation q1 annotations q0 uh, uh, theta annotations q n square annotations uh, notations are there so based on that we will find it and uh, uh, like uh, you you mentioned in terms of uh, like your your responsibilities uh, with respect to the project mm -hmm. are are there any other responsibilities with respect to the team management like mentoring the team or uh, managing the team or even um, helping out uh, the collaborating with the team but can you can you just talk about that you mentioned that you work in sprints right what is what would be your team size yeah so the team size is 12 members so some of the out of 12 members four to six members will be new one only so like suppose if new persons are joining or may be coming for that uh, or any new sprint requirement which is coming so we need to understand the requirement then we have to uh, give the idea to the our others person who all are not able to understand and what are the changes need to be happen that we have to give the clarifications for the particular uh, colleagues and all so we are also handling the team the team size is five to six members only not in 12 out of 12 we handling five to six we are uh, getting the uh, requirement and then we are distributing this requirement as a explanations understandings and all what are the changes where the changes and all we require that we need to discuss and then we'll divide the task okay mm. And uh, coming to uh, databases, you mentioned you have worked on Mongo, MongoDB as well, along with the regular RDBMS, is it? Correct, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, can you state the differences between the regular RDBMS and the, the other DBs like Mongo? yeah dbms is a data uh, management uh, system so where we can uh, insert our data based on the column for so rdbms is a relational database management system where relational data means the data will be stored based on the column form row and column based but in uh, no sequence will have a data will be stored based on the uh, collections like so if you have a json data or text data or any type of data will be there that will be stored based on the collection so rdbms which will be allowed the transactions so suppose if you have a for a seed property which will follow while we are inserting or connecting with the database then you need to store the all business logic whatever the operations is performing like ddl dml or DQ, dcl dql and all so that informations you have to capture and that will be always there so the transactions what are the transactions will happen so either is the transaction is happening as a rollback commits and all so need to capture and handle this type of thing so mostly we will use the d uh, rdbms 
and uh, no sequels mostly we have a handle link for like suppose if you don't have any uh, transactions details is required like suppose promo code and all is there so we have a details which will be updated on daily basis what are the valid promo code is applicable for the particular customer if he has used then we need to remove this data or remove the particular records and all so once the promo has expired and all so these all are not related for the business logic where uh, which need to be capture the transactions and all in that cases mostly we will go for the uh, non no sequels so that easily fasting faster and all will be there and we can manipulate manage the data apart from this we have a multiple features are there but this is the main features which we discuss Oh, okay, but uh, I mean, I was confused about like the business use case you mentioned. Like the, uh, I mean, I am not mm -hmm. particularly aware of the kind of mm -hmm. things. But you are saying for uh, in, in general, I, I thought like we for performing operations for yeah for forming uh, operation yeah yeah. So, so in if you will compare these all, uh, so mostly uh, no sequels will be the faster compared to sequels. So uh, the uh, performance and scalability and all will be faster as compared to that. Okay. Mm, and uh, 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 one more thing I wanted to ask was, sorry. Yeah, in the network. No. I'll move to other. Sorry? We have a meeting. Uh, I'll finish by 5 o'clock. But 5 o'clock? Is that fine? Or I'll move to other room. Okay, I'll find some other room. It's not allowed at all. Yeah, sure. Sorry, we need to shift a room. Just a minute. Okay. Just, just give me a minute. Yes. To see me, uh, I am still seeing okay. Yeah, I think uh, you want to see your screen. Second, second largest number in an array. Okay. Just give me a 